Hey everyone, this is Achuta Bhava from Nightlight Astrology, and today we are going to take a look at Venus's upcoming square to Pluto, which is coming up over the weekend. Um, so we'll take a look at that archetypal combination today and see what you can expect from it. It's an interesting one because Venus is also moving into a trine with Jupiter. In my monthly overview video, I mentioned the Venus trine to Jupiter as one of the most positive, um, perhaps positive transits of the month but failed to mention the simultaneous square to Pluto. So that was me, um, you know, trying to add some sunshine and <laughs> skipping over Pluto. And Pluto is not to be skipped over. So uh, that doesn't mean it's necessarily bad or anything like that. So I'm not trying to rain on the, the parade of Venus trying Jupiter. Still, um, I think some really powerful things to be uh, powerful and positive things to be said about this transit, especially since Venus is trining Jupiter at the same time. So I'm going to try to explain that dynamic overall. We might even revisit it on Monday of this week or of next week. Uh, in the meantime, some of you guys were watching my channel yesterday and may have noticed that the video from yesterday glitched out. <laughs> I looked like uh, I needed an exorcist because my, the way <laughs> the way that the screen paused made me look like I was possessed. So <laughs> I got all of a sudden I got a flood of messages from people being like, um, something's wrong. <laughs> something's wrong with your uh, video for the day. So uh, luckily, Kat helped me fix it. And yeah, we're good. Um, anyway, so make sure you do check out the videos from the past two days for more on Mars opposite Neptune, which is perfecting today, as perfected yesterday into today, September 3rd. Um, so those are good transits to brush up on right now as well, if you haven't already watched them for this week. Anyway, I am also very excited to announce that my new program, Ancient Astrology for the Modern Mystic, my fall cohort is now open for enrollment. So the early bird registration is now open and available. Um, and uh, all the other normal registrations are open available. I'll give you a little crash course on how this works in case you're new to my channel. So every six months, I begin a new section of my year one program, which is called Ancient Astrology for the Modern Mystic. It's a course in Hellenistic astrology. If you visit my website, nightlightastrology.com, and go to the first year course, um, you can learn all about it. Everything that we cover, we um, work through the history of Western philosophy. We look at the philosophical and mystical roots of astrology and the, um, the spiritual purpose of astrology, really. Uh, we talk about the basic astronomy that goes into the formation of all of the basic um, theoretical components of astrology, houses, signs, planets, aspects. We look at um, the role of karma, fate, and free will. And then we go through a really deep and um, thorough explanation of what are houses, not just what are the meanings of the houses or what topics are associated with them, but what, where does a house come from conceptually? Where does a sign come from conceptually and philosophically? Why did these things ever come about in the combination that they did? Why do we have signs, houses, and planets? When you get this level of learning um, about the fundamentals, it's deceptive because a lot of people will, will come and they'll, um, they might look at the curriculum and go like, well, I know a lot of this already. But if you've never studied ancient astrology, ancient Hellenistic astrology, and, and learned about the, uh, the core theoretical thinking that was behind all of these things, you're really missing out because once you have that understanding, you have something like a skeleton key that... Um, you know, it, it unlocks something more than a list of things that you're memorizing about signs, planets, and houses. Anyway, uh, Hellenistic astrology is also a very unique kind of astrology in the way that it was practiced. You could say that it's much more like a predictive karmic science. Um, it, and, and we talk about that a lot in the program. How do we end up blending modern psychological archetypal astrology with ancient, the sort of ancient predictive science, the kind of study of karma and fate and destiny that was ancient astrology. So it's a really good program for people who are looking to really hone and develop predictive abilities, as well as being able to talk to clients about their interior lives. So at any rate, uh, the program consists of 30 classes uh, over the course of a year, uh, plus 12 webinars that are led by guest teachers. We have a group forum discussion. We have um, we have group forum discussion throughout the year. You can be in touch with me in email throughout the year. We have a support staff of tutors. We have breakout study sessions. We have recommended reading, listening, and optional 
like quizzes and things like that that you can take bonus lectures throughout the course um, you get to keep all the recordings you can work it at your own pace you can attend live or you can do it remotely so it's a really flexible program uh, we've had you know at this point i think almost 2000 students go through the program uh, since i've been doing it um, and uh, it's yeah it's a great it's a great course if you have any questions about it there's a frequently asked questions section. You can also email us info at nightlightastrology.com. Uh, there's an early bird payment, there's a payment plan, and then there's tuition assistance. So early bird payments, the best way to go. If you want to save some money, if you want to take the class, but for whatever reason you have financial constraints, you can reach out and try to use that. Uh, see if you can use that tuition assistance. It's available for people who, you know, maybe you're in school, um, you know, full-time, or maybe you're a single mom, or maybe you're, um, you have a really tight budget, whatever the case might be, the need-based tuition is something I've been doing for 10 years to try to make all astrological education that I provide for people, um, to people for, um, affordable prices. So, um, yeah, so you can check that out. Um, if you have any questions about any of it, feel free to e email us info at nightlightastrology.com. I'll be regularly plugging my course since it's now September and the course starts in the middle of November. Uh, so I'll be plugging it regularly. So you'll hear me talk more about it. Um, it starts on November 13th. So you have a little bit of time to think about it still, if you want to, but it's a great time to hop on the early bird payment and save as well. It's Saturdays and it meets at noon Eastern 11 central, the live webinars do, but you, again, a lot of people from all over the world in different time zones will follow along and watch the recordings of the live sessions, um, you know, on their own time. So uh, there's an optional certification course, a test at the end that you can take as well. And, um, but it's optional. Some people like to take it and get the certificate. Some people just take it for, you know, their own, uh, for just because it's a hobby and not necessarily because you're pursuing a professional career. So at any rate, thank you guys for letting me take a minute to plug the new course. It's really, it's always exciting when it's like, okay, registration's open. I get really excited to meet a new, new group of students coming in and new group of people to study with. All right, let's take a look at Venus and Venus is, opposite, or, uh, Venus is square to Pluto now, and uh, just give you a feel for what's going on here. So here's Venus at 21 Libra, going into the square with Pluto at 24 Capricorn, and then moving into the trine with Jupiter at 25 Aquarius. So this is going to perfect, we're going to move this forward, this is September 3rd, you see September 4th, Venus is getting into the engagement range today and tomorrow, which means within three degrees, that's when you start to really feel it, you go to Sunday, and that's uh, going to be a square between Venus and Pluto um, on Sunday, September 5th. That's really starting to peak. And it comes into Monday morning. Venus will have moved through the square to Pluto, and then it hits the trine to Jupiter. So like I said, I think we'll probably revisit this transit on Monday just because it's still definitely going to be in the air on Monday. But I wanted to prepare everybody for it over the weekend as well. So... What can we anticipate from Venus and Libra, square Pluto and Capricorn with a little trine to Jupiter in the mix? Well, here's the nice thing is that everything we're going to talk about, we can basically add on to the end of it, and there may be a blessing attached. Um, because with Jupiter in the mix, Venus-Pluto transit can be a little difficult, but when you have a Venus square Pluto as Venus is also hitting a trine to Jupiter, you get the idea about Venus becoming empowered or Venus being blessed, or Venus receiving something of worth or value through its encounter with Pluto. And so everything I'm about to say could actually end up in some kind of um, unique benefit or blessing, which is really a silver lining. And I, I still think that this is probably the most positive transit of the month, because whatever catharsis Venus and Pluto might bring together, I think it results in um, just it, whether it's um, a lesson learned that's really valuable, or if it's some kind of, um, you know, alliance that's made, or if it's an agreement that's reached, or if it's some kind of blessing or benefit that's gained, um, I, I really trust that Jupiter in the mix of this is going to be pretty helpful. But let's talk about Venus Pluto in general. So Venus, the goddess, a planet that's associated with everything desirable, pleasing, and pleasant, um, everything that's sensual, beautiful. Uh, relationally, it's related to things like sex, but also um, beauty. It's related to harmony and friendship. Uh, it's, it has the feeling also of that which we find attractive. And sometimes also Venus, because what, what's attractive goes along with what is repulsive. Venus will 
define our taste or our values in contrast with what we don't like or what we find like repugnant or even evil or somehow um, immoral or ugly. So that is especially important when Venus, Venus is encountering Pluto because when Venus hits Pluto, Venus goes into the underworld. So for example, um, some really strong Venus-Pluto dynamics were at work in uh, Tim Burton's birth chart when he created some of his most memorable um, movies. Um, for example, when uh, I think it was Batman was one of the first ones, uh, which featured the Joker, of course, and um, but disturbing, dark, but very beautifully. Like that movie is really beautiful to watch. It's it's a really it's really beautifully filmed and shot and imagined. Um, so Edward Scissorhands is another one. So when, when you think about um, beauty and darkness, you think about Venus and Pluto. So Venus and Pluto can just be about an erotic, dark beauty, not, nothing evil or immoral necessarily, but something that's a little bit more subterranean that, that um, you know, that brings up the almost like the, the nocturnal space of beauty, the nighttime beauty, the evening, dark, mysterious beauty. Um, pretty erudite and sophisticated Venus and Libra. So, you know, I, I think of this almost like, um, you know, uh, some kind of uh, <laughs> the image that comes to my mind is like, you know, the, the, an affair with like, um, an affair with a, a prof, like an illicit affair with like a, a professor or something like that at a, at a school. It's kind of, um, and, and let's say that there's, uh, you know, some, nothing like abusive happening necessarily, but like, there's like a big age gap and it's sort of illicit or something like that. Um, you can also think about Venus in, in Libra square to Pluto as, um, you know, the, the sign of sophistication and beauty but also like the darkness of like power and intensity and manipulation. So you think of almost like a well-dressed dominatrix with a PhD in philosophy or something like that. You can kind of get the Venus in Libra square Pluto in Capricorn vibe. Uh, so I hope I'm, I'm, I'm getting across some of the images that might go with this, but Venus in the underworld doesn't have to be anything bad or even difficult. It can just literally be that there's going to be sort of more subterranean Venusian themes going on. On the other hand, um, Pluto is like a purgative. And so when Venus meets Pluto, it's as though there are uh, purgations, Venusian purgations. For example, Venus and Pluto, I've seen more times than I can count in my practice when people, you know, especially like, usually it's like younger people who are in the dating scene or whatever, they may date someone and end up picking up an STD or something like that. And, and, and there might be some um, need to cleanse oneself of like a person like, Oh, I can't, or, or someone's breaking up with someone who's like, Oh, they're a toxic presence in my life. I have to like get out of the relationship. So if Venus Pluto is expressing itself in terms of purgation, you might see some kind of unhealthy attraction, uh, that's being purged, or you may see, um, the idea of cleansing and healing and purgation related to what we desire, what we find attractive or beautiful, and, and maybe something that's unhealthy that needs to be like, um, yeah, like healed. Um, Venus square Pluto can also be the moment where let's say that you're into your, you gossip, you know, you're like a, you're not, maybe not even malicious. Let's just say you just tend to be a gossiper. This is the one where the gossiping gets you into trouble and suddenly you go, oh my God, I have a problem. I have a little bit of a problem with gossiping or, you know, something like that. Um, Venus square Pluto can also be the moment where there's just some kind of major social faux pas. I had a Venus square Pluto moment this morning. I was dropping my daughter off at school and, you know, we have to like give our, the parent names or whatever. It's like, covid stuff i guess so i had to like give the parent name and they were like well what? It was like i don't i haven't met you yet what's your name and i was like oh i'm a chuta <laughs> you know and that's because that's what i go by and i i prefer that that's what people call me um but i could see the look on the woman's face which was like that's strange and different and i'm not sure if i like you anymore you know <laughs> it's like and i was like oh god you know like is and and then I started thinking, oh my God, is my daughter gonna suffer? You know, because of my weird, 
you know, because of my weirdness or whatever. So Venus square Pluto can also be about social ostracization or um, the, the, like the faux pas or the slip ups that you have socially the, 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 also the, um, the underlying bias or prejudice or um, that, that we might have in some particular setting in our lives toward one type of person versus another. Um, so anything where some, some, something about the social fabric of your life is you're, you're getting to see the shadows of it, or you're, you're being faced with something that makes it challenging to keep the status quo or to keep peace or to keep um, some sense of uh, harmony alive with others. Um, now, also Venus can in Pluto can touch on evil. Um, doesn't have to be that way. But one of the significations of Pluto is going to be to put us in touch with that, which is dark, destructive, sort of demonic, and, and we might even use the word evil. I think it's important to not like whitewash that word, like there is such a thing as evil. There's an experience that we can call evil, whether we talk about what it means ultimately or not, I don't know. But Venus and evil, um, anytime that there's something like rape or there's violation of a woman's body, or there's, um, you know, complicated topics related to um, women and power. Um, for example, some of the things that are happening in the news right now, which again, I don't really watch the news, but I always hear about what's going, the big stuff through social media because that I'm, I'm on it every day. And, um, you know, there's a lot of controversy right now in the US around law being passed or a ban or something in Texas about abortion. Right away, I, I was like, oh, there's Venus Pluto. Um, whatever side you want to look at it, the topic of um, women and pregnancy and um, the, her rights to her body versus someone else saying what you can or can't do with your body. Um, there's, there's, of course, questions about, um, you know, on, on another side, I'm not uh, suggesting identification for myself on one side or the other. I'm not going to take you know a position on this. I'm just looking at the archetypes. But you can say that um, Venus and Pluto is also like right now. There's there's a, a good amount of people saying you're trying to violate my body and my rights as a woman. There's a lot of people saying don't be you know you shouldn't be killing children. Women should keep their children. The whole conversation. The whole conversation is Venus and Pluto. So anyway, do with that what you will. But um, you know, uh, this is Venus and the the topic of evil. What constitutes evil? That's subjective. Some people are going to say that you know one side of this debate represents evil in the world, and of course, there's other very passionate people who will take the other side and say that's evil. Um, so there, there's something about this that's in the air right now, though, and just to be aware of it, um, Venus in evil, you know, Venus and Pluto, you can also think about like date rape or, um, you know, some kind of, uh, what's the word, um, uh, coercion, like a manipulation emotionally. Oh, you want this job? Well, you know, maybe you'll do something sexual. Those kinds of things are, can be very Venus, Pluto. On the other hand, Venus and Pluto can speak to empowerment of the feminine. Pluto, Pluto is a very em empowering planet in that it, it, it infuses whatever it touches with a kind of empowered intensity, depth, um, a sense of uh, primal like, like force. So Venus with Pluto can be very much about the empowerment of women and the um, almost like woman as warrior type of thing. Now, Venus, um, you know, at the moment, Venus is not what I would, uh, what I, Venus is in the evening star position. And so, in, and in Libra, I would say Venus is going to be more diplomatic. Venus is looking at issues about justice, fairness, peace, um, tactful relationships, diplomacy, um, whether, and, and Venus can uh, even, tend to be a little bit more like vain or concerned with superficial things or appearances um, in the evening star position and in Libra. Um, but that, and that, which also could be a part of what Venus and Pluto is bringing up something about superficiality or vanity or whatever, but 
nonetheless, this can be a very empowered Venus and Pluto. Uh, Pluto can very much empower Venus right now. So we'll also watch for the intensification and empowerment of Venus energy, Venus becoming stronger, more assertive and bold, um, generally speaking, I would still imagine that, that that's not going to make Venus like, um, you know, a hell raiser. Like it's, it's not like a, a Venus and Scorpio or Aries. It's, it's still going to be tactful, but, um, you know, some of the, the, um, you think a little bit more about Venus, Pluto in, um, in Libra, and you think a little bit more cloak and dagger in the way that Venus may go about trying to assert herself right now. So anyway, these are all really interesting things to think about with um, uh, Venus, Pluto. Um, there's many different uh, appearances that Venus takes. All planets have many different forms and shapes that they take. And it's not always, um, it can be a little misleading to talk about Venus in terms of the feminine. Venus can more broadly, especially when it touches on Pluto or Uranus or even Neptune, um, can bring up issues about um, gender or sexual identity. Um, Venus Pluto, for example, I, I've seen when people decide to come out um, or when um, someone decides to get into a relationship that is differently identified than ones that they've been in in the past. Uh, Venus and Pluto can be around when there are um, issues about um, like let's say, like dating someone of a different race or culture than yourself. So Venus and Pluto can also touch on the taboo surrounding different kinds of relationships or sexual orientations and things like that as well. Um, so anyway, that's a good... Now, take all of that and let's just add to it. And because Venus is hitting a trine with Jupiter, any of these topics, there, there may be the aura of abundance, blessings. On the dark side of this, Venus, Pluto with a trine to Jupiter could be very opportunistic. And at like, it could be about what is socially ad advantageous or politically or professionally advantageous. And Venus in Libra with, with the square to Pluto may be a little ruthless or may not even care about the compromises it's making as long as it gets us where we want to go. So you do have to watch for that a little bit. On the other hand, any of the more challenging dimensions that we talked about could um, be um, softened or could be eased by the presence of Jupiter. Venus goes into the underworld, but there's still this kind of uplifting quality to it. Um, think, for example, about my daughter really loves The Nightmare Before Christmas, another Tim Burton movie. It's like dark and has that kind of dark Venusian, um, you know, beauty, but also... Um, it's an uplifting story. Like it's charming and fun. So you think about Jupiter, just lightening things a little bit, or you can think about whatever catharsis or difficult topics might be encountered. There may be some blessing in disguise, or there may be some upliftment that's there, kind of a, a padding built into the transit a little bit. So um, I'll be interested to see how this plays out. I haven't, um, you know, I haven't noticed it so much. Um, yet for myself, but typically I don't tend to notice things until they're within about three degrees. So to, you know, depending on the planet, like a couple of days. So I anticipate seeing this Saturday and Sunday in my own life somehow. And, um, if I do, I'll be sure to, you know, share some stories with you guys, but if you guys want to share a story, you can put hashtag grabbed into the comments section planets, sometimes called grahas or grabbers. If we're not paying attention, they tend to come in and grab us. And uh, uh, however, if we work with them, the same, the double word of the, you know, graha also means to grasp as in like to understand something. So I would love to hear your stories. If you have one, feel free to share it with that hashtag grab, put the, make sure you put the planetary dynamic or aspect into the comment as well. Like hashtag grabbed Venus square Pluto then tell your story, keep the story simple too, like a couple of sentences when it goes on and on and on, there's no way that we're going to use it. Um, if you want to email instead, you can email us grabbed at nightlightastrology.com. And we look at those stories. We don't respond to your email, but we, we do catalog them and then potentially use them for future episodes, storytelling episodes, where we kind of share what you guys have been going through with the transits. So 
At any rate, um, I hope that you guys have a fantastic weekend that Venus Pluto is um, merciful to you <laughs> and, and me too. And uh, that we get a little of that Jupiterian vibe. I think we'll be back on Monday to re rehash this a little bit too and see how things are going. Maybe I'll have a few stories to share at that point as well. All right. And again, remember new class is open for enrollment. I'd love to see some of you in class. Check out my website, nightlightastrology.com. Go to the first year course page and hope to see some of you in class soon. All right. Take it easy, everyone. Bye.